Previously, Adolf's division has been annihilated by his self-destruct. Michelle's division and Captain Komachi's division have gathered together, and they are fighting the terraformars. The Russian division has found proof that the Annex mission was betrayed by one of the other divisions. The Chinese only pretended to be dead, they are still alive. I'm calling it right now, these guys are the bad guys. And finally, a spaceship that looks like it belongs to the Terraformars has left Mars. Destination? Maybe Earth. Akari and Michelle are back to back against a whole lot of Terraformars. And yes, we heard you, these Terraformars really do look like Obunga. Maybe these are all Obama's descendants. Anyways, Akari and Michelle are both extremely powerful and well trained, which means they kick ass. Michelle recalls seeing Akari with a boy struggling with the alien virus. That boy. To save him is Akari's motivation. Michelle calls Akari an idiot for making that promise to that kid. And you know what that means. She's starting to develop feelings for him. Some terraformers try to kill Akari, but Alex uses his baseball skills to save him. But Akari's mutant drug runs out, so Michelle rushes to save him. But Akari is an anime protagonist. So, remember this, they always get up. Now, if you remember, Akari can use his mutant powers without the drug. He just needed the drug to stabilize his mentality. So, Akari activates his power to a huge explosion. Fueled with the desire to save the boy, Akari goes to fight the special mutant terraformar. Despite having his ass kicked, he still somehow manages to beat it. When Michelle comes to hold him, his hand somehow finds its way to her breast. I'm surprised she hasn't kicked his ass for this. Once they beat the rest of the enemies, Akari is put to rest while the others regroup. Michelle tells Captain Komachi that Adolf's division is probably annihilated. They continue journeying for the next six days without being attacked by the terraformars. Captain Komachi leads the combined two divisions towards the main annex ship. On the way, Komachi has a few backstory flashbacks. He thinks about the Chinese leader Liu, and how friendly and outgoing he was. Komachi really trusted Liu. Down on Earth, the leader of Yu NASA reveals to the international leaders that the Annex Project was not meant to study the terraformars. It was meant as a trial experiment for the humans who have been given mutation powers. Back on Mars, Michelle starts behaving more open and warmly in front of Akari. Komachi is shocked to see this because Michelle is usually a cold-hearted Sundere. Meanwhile, the Russian division, led by Sylvester, finds more rooms inside the Martian pyramid with blueprints and designs. There are charts detailing the human anatomy. All the six officers know that the terraformars are interested in human bodies. So why were the Chinese division's bodies all burnt up? Michel and Komachi start suspecting that the Chinese are still alive and probably the traitors to this mission. And yes, that's true. The Chinese have reached the main annex ship and they are acting in secret. They are attacked by a horde of terraformars, but their leader, Liu, is very chill about it. They use a targeted missile system like the red light green light stuff to kill these enemies. Captain Komachi's team also reaches near the location. Seeing the Chinese division there, Komachi feels betrayed by Liu. He contacts Earth for further instructions. But Liu realizes that they have been caught, so he uses a jamming device to stop their communication. Liu contacts them and reveals that they, the Chinese, were the ones who brought the six terraformars on board before they even arrived on Mars. Then he threatens to shoot powerful missiles at them unless Akari and Michelle hand themselves over to them. Akari and Michelle are special, remember? Because they mysteriously inherited their mutant powers instead of going through surgery. But Komachi and the others stop them, saying that they can't be trusted. Just then, some terraformars attack the Chinese division, so they put up an AA shield against their rocks. So Alex throws his baseball with the speed of a bullet at the AA machine. In the short time before the AA shield comes up again, Kanako takes Komachi to Liu. Komachi fights off many of Liu's members with ease. Then they go face to face with each other. Using the strength of the giant hornet, Komachi manages to put a big spike through Liu's neck. Meanwhile, the Russian division gets an SOS from Komachi and Michelle's Japanese-American alliance. Komachi tells everyone that he has injected a painful venom into Liu's body. But it turns out Liu is not dead. Liu commands his men to shoot Komachi's legs. Then he uses the mutant drug to transform into the blue-ringed octopus which can heal itself rapidly. But he does not kill Komachi. He takes him hostage. Seeing this, Michelle and Akari escape from the location because Liu's division wants them and only them. 
Suddenly, their air is filled with a hallucination gas, the gas belonging to the Russian Ivan. Using the advantage of the Genjutsu, they save Komachi. Then, they send their airship into the fray. Turns out the Russian and the Chinese are allies. Were allies. Now, the Russians are turning their backs on the Chinese because of how the Chinese have betrayed everyone. Meanwhile, Michelle and the others rush toward the Roman division to gain reinforcements. Sylvester is angry at Liu and the Chinese for teaching the Terraformars so much about humanity. Despite being allies on Earth, he is now ready to kick ass. After all, he has a family to protect. The Chinese bombard Sylvester with a barrage of missiles. But Sylvester is an old man in a battle anime. So, naturally, he's super tough and he destroys the missiles instead. Meanwhile, Sylvester's son-in-law, Alexander, sneaks into the Annex ship. Honestly, I'm surprised anyone has the courage to marry Sylvester's daughter. Down on Earth, Ichiro reveals that his country has secured Professor Honda. In the process, he reveals that Honda was the one who created Akari. All the world leaders are shocked to hear that an important scientist like Honda is now under Japanese control. Meanwhile, the two bosses, Sylvester and Liu, start fighting. So, the mini-bosses from both sides engage each other. Liu gains the upper hand and knocks out Sylvester. The Chinese mini-bosses also defeat the Russian ones. Down on Earth, the Yu NASA leader tries to bring Professor Honda into the meeting. But, Prime Minister Ichiro is tough on the matter and he decides to keep Honda as his trump card. Up on Mars, Liu takes the defeated Russian members hostage. While being held, Sylvester thinks about his conversation with the Russian president. Sylvester and his team found something important in the pyramids. What it was won't be revealed now, for suspense purposes, of course. Sylvester regains his strength and goes to fight Liu. When Liu grabs him using the tentacles, Sylvester cuts off both their limbs. Then, he starts breaking Liu's body with his legs. So, Liu starts spewing his octopus poison. Just then, Alexander comes out of the annex. He threatens to shoot the communication jamming tower with the missiles. If that happens, then all the divisions will be able to contact Earth and tell them that the Chinese have betrayed them. So, one of the Chinese girls, Chun Li, comes forward and she… starts stripping. Is Chun Li trying to seduce… okay, no, it's just her powers. Chun Li disappears and appears behind Alexander and almost kills him. But one of the Russians stops them. Then suddenly, a strange light comes and stops Chun Li. The sky suddenly goes dark. Let's not forget that we're on Mars, and they are here to fight Obunga, I mean Terraformars. And the Terraformars are here, in massive numbers. There are so many of them, they blot out the sky. A very, very specially mutated Terraformar with the powers of a dragonfly comes and easily kills one of the Russian members. The Russians and the Chinese work together to fight it, but it is too fast. It gathers all the bodies of the dead humans and sends them to the others for experimentation. Meanwhile, one of the Chinese girls, Hong, who is very, very innocent, goes inside the annex. But a young terraformar appears behind her. Outside the annex, more of the young terraformars attack them while the leader teaches them how to fight. They start dominating the humans. Just then, Kanako appears and cuts the little terraformars. Ivan also comes with her and releases the Genjutsu toxin. While Kanako distracts the dragonfly terraformar, the guys defeat the little ones. Kanako manages to escape, so the dragonfly terraformar goes back to the annex and all the terraformars start swarming over it. They really want to destroy the main ship. Suddenly, the terraformars start dropping from the spaceship like… like… flies from a spaceship. The Chinese wear full body armors. Turns out, Hong can release a very, very deadly bacteria that can kill anything, and I mean anything within a small radius. Seeing that Hong's mutation is a bacteria type, Sylvester commands everyone to retreat. While Hong exposes her naked body to the skies, Alexander stays back. He infiltrates the Chinese and kills one of them. Liu correctly deduces that it must be Alexander and he's probably ready to die as he isn't wearing a protective suit. Meanwhile, Alexander has lost one arm but he's still trying to kill Hong so that his teammates can approach the annex ship. How about a character backstory? We haven't had those in a while. Long, long ago, when Alexander had hair, he fell in love with a girl named Gina. Despite being rejected so many times, Alexander kept pushing her. She says that her father would not allow it. So, Alexander asks to meet her father. And her father is the scary General Sylvester. In their first meeting ever, Sylvester punches him out of the house. 
Gina says that he looks like a playboy, so he shaves his hair. It works. Sylvester punches him again. Despite all this, Alexander refuses to give up. Seeing his dedication, Gina starts falling for him. So she takes him back. This time, Sylvester punches him. Again. Gina gets angry, so she and her mother beat up Sylvester and demand that he give Alexander a chance. Soon after, Alexander and Gina get married. Gina gets pregnant, but one day she gets infected with the alien virus. To save her is the reason Sylvester and Alexander are here on Mars. Back to the present, Alexander goes full Rambo on the Chinese and kills them one by one. He finally corners Hong in an empty room. He hesitates, seeing that it's just a child, but he loves his wife too much and will do anything to save them. The Russians need to use the annex ship's facilities to make the vaccine for the alien virus. He is just about to kill Hong, but the Chinese come to save her. They overpower Alexander with their greater numbers, but they have one thing that Alexander does not, the willingness to die. He injects four doses of the drugs and grabs Chun-Li by the neck, but Hong grabs him and begs him not to kill Chun-Li. Alexander hesitates, and in that time, he dies from a drug overdose. Liu takes this time to appreciate Alexander's resolve and warrior spirit. Then, they contact Akari and Michelle to force them to surrender. But they are faced with a bigger threat. A mutant terraformer stops them. And this one seems to have absorbed Michelle's father's powers, the same power that she inherited genetically from him. Elsewhere, Captain Komachi wakes up. Sylvester quickly runs him through all the ish that went down and details about the Chinese division's powers. Then, they decide to go toward Akari and Michelle to assist them. Meanwhile, Akari and Michelle use his threads and the two ships to grab the ant terraformar. While she beats it up, she thinks back to her father and their mutual fascination over ants. As she's about to deal the final blow, the terraformar knocks her away with a flick of his fingers. On top of that, another terraformar appears, and it uses a special acid to dissolve Akari's thread. Then, the two of them prepare to gang up on him. But Michelle didn't hear no bell. She comes back to the ant terraformar all ready for round two. She quickly tries to use her explosive gas on it, but the ant terraformar sucks in the explosive gas. Then, it throws the acid terraformar and Akari far away. It's a double one versus one full anime style. The acid terraformar starts using a strange martial arts technique to attack him. Akari, being a karate specialist, manages to fight back. So the terraformar takes out his gun and kindly asks him to parry this, you filthy casual. With lots of bullets in his body, Akari slumps down. Yaeko from the Japanese division has no one to ask for help, so she calls the Chinese to shoot their missiles at the terraformar which is about to take Akari away. So the Chinese shoot a missile in that position. Turns out, this was a clever plan by Michelle and the group. Akari suddenly wakes up. He was wearing bulletproof vests after all. He uses his threads to bring the missile down. It's actually empty. It turns out, when Alexander snuck into the Annex spaceship, he removed the warhead from the missiles, and instead, he put a weapon that was very special to Akari. Alexander knew that the Chinese would shoot at Akari if the terraformars were going to take him. Akari thanks Alexander for working so hard to get the weapon to him. The weapon is a specially forged ninja blade meant for someone like Akari to use. It's now a proper showdown between him and the Acid Terraformar. Links to part 3 and other episodes will be on the pinned comment below once it's up. Thanks for watching!